What is going on Phantom Army, it's your boy Phantom Stilts and welcome back to another brand new video on the channel. Today we're taking a look at a really, really cool piece of equipment that I just picked up about a week or week and a half ago. It is the Elgato Stream Deck. It is a content creator's dream. I don't know how I've gotten so far with YouTube in three years and about six months on Twitch without this thing. It's made my life so much easier and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I use mine and the buttons that I have set up on the actual device. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video guys. So my stream deck and my interface is really, really simple. I just got it about a week ago. So I have some of the settings set up and how I like it uh, for the most part. It's really, really simple, really simplistic. And if you have the same setup as I do, uh, this layout will work perfect for you. So we're gonna run through uh, the different buttons and the different layouts that I have for my stream deck. And if you guys like it, make sure to like the video, make sure to like and subscribe, you guys are brand new to the channel. And we're gonna go through it right here, guys. So first off, we have the clear chat button. So with this button right here, what we do exactly is it's tied to my Twitch account. So whenever I go into my Twitch chat and I don't like what's going on, I wanna clear the chat out, start fresh, you just hit this button and it's actually tied to your chat in Twitch. So what will happen is if I type something in in Twitch, we'll bring Twitch up here in just a second here. Let me get a Twitch window open. So if we go to my Twitch chat, if we go to channel and we type something in like, hey, what's going on guys and i send that there obviously it's from me and i don't want that there all i have to do is hit the clear chat button hit it again make sure it worked there we go it worked that time so as you can see i hit the clear chat button and it did it again so let's try and uh do something else so we'll say let's say there's like a bunch of stuff going on in my chat all this stuff right here just random stuff and i want to get rid of it clear chat so I just hit the button and it clears the chat for me. So that's what that button does. So we'll go to the next one here to the right. So this number with the percentage is actually my CPU usage. It's a tie in actually, if you go into more actions here on the bottom and you go to this little plugin right here it says CPU, it's actually done by Elgato right here. It displays your current CPU usage of your computer. So if you're worried about why you're gaming, if your CPU is overclocked or it's running too hard or, or, too, or too hot, um, you can definitely install this display CPU usage icon and it will appear right on your stream deck. So that's that one. So let's go back to the stream deck here. So then we have Google Chrome. Now, the cool thing about the Stream Deck is you're able to manipulate folders and stuff. So this button actually has stuff inside of it. So we have the Google Chrome icon that shows me that this is going to connect to Google Chrome for whatever button I push inside the folder. Now to create a folder, you actually just go to Stream Deck that's right here and you go to create a folder. Now, when you create a folder, it opens up sort of like another window into the Stream Deck. So if you click on the Google Chrome, It'll show you that I have here, let's go back here real quick. It'll show you when I click here that I have six items and content inside this folder. So when you click on it again, it'll show you that I have different icons within this folder. So I can click on the Google Chrome icon and then inside the Google Chrome icon inside the folder, I have these websites uh, hot keyed to the buttons on the stream deck. So we have Twitch here. This is connected to my twitch.tv uh, website. Uh, this is connected to my YouTube channel. This is connected to Spotify, Facebook, Twitter, and Streamlabs OBS, the dashboard for Streamlabs. So just to show you how it works, I will go to Twitch. So if I hit the Twitch button, it immediately goes to twitch.tv. Same thing with YouTube. If I hit the YouTube button, it goes straight to YouTube, or excuse me, youtube.com and so on and so forth. So if I hit the Spotify, it will go to my Spotify page. I hit the Facebook. So the Facebook one actually is not set up, so I didn't realize that. So if we hit the Twitter button, it will go to my Twitter homepage. And there we have Twitter there. And last but not least, if we hit the Streamlab button, it will go, obviously I have to log in with my Twitch account to Streamlabs. Um, we can actually do that right now because you guys won't be able to see my password, so. Um, actually, it logged me into Twitch automatically, so I do have it logged in. So this is my Twitch dashboard. Uh, I can see all my streams and things like that, uh, how many peak viewers I've had, my average views per stream, 
um, that kind of stuff. So this is a really handy tool if you don't like typing in while you're streaming. If you don't like typing in all the websites and stuff, you can actually hit this uh, buttons on your keyboard, um, or excuse me, your stream deck, and it will take you directly to that website that you've hotkeyed to that, um, the URL that you've hotkeyed to that button. So like I said, all you really have to do is come up with a picture you want here, uh, copy and paste it from your actual uh, images here, and all you have to do is um, basically copy and paste the URL that you want here and just hit enter. So that's what I have for the Chrome hotkey that's in the Stream Deck on the homepage of the Stream Deck. So we'll go back here. Next, I have a send tweet button. So this is set up to uh, sync with my Twitter account. So if ever I want to stream and I want the stream to go live and I want it to actually post to my Twitter that my stream is live, I just put stream is live here. So if we hit that key, it just now uh, let me know that it posted a tweet to my Twitter. So let's go to my Twitter page. So we'll go back and we'll hit the Chrome button. We'll go to Twitter and we'll go to my homepage. As you can see, 12 seconds ago, my stream is live tweet just went out from my Steam, my stream deck. So I didn't hit anything on my computer. You guys probably didn't hear my keyboard, my mouse or anything go off. I hit the button on my stream deck and you can add a website to your stream. You can add whatever you want to that tweet and it'll send it out automatically because it is connected to my Twitter account. So that's that button. And we go back to the homepage for the stream deck. This I have just a little clock, as I was gonna say, uh, this is under the more actions as well. There's a lot of really, really cool um, stuff that Streamlabs, excuse me, the Stream Deck that Elgato gives you that are plugins. So you have like your control center here for Elgato, for your key light and other devices, such as like your uh, HD game capture, your capture card, stuff like that. There's a voice mod for like voice changers um, that I haven't played around with, but I'm sure it's a lot of fun. Has a lot of different uh, voice changer applications and stuff like that. The display CPU usage, CPU usage, like I said, it's got a Spotify integration that I've installed. Uh, the clock that I obviously have on mine, mic mute, which you can also tailor to um, the stuff on your Stream Deck. You don't have to use this mic mute feature, but it probably integrates to make it a little bit easier so you don't have to set up all of the, um, all of the widgets, or excuse me, not all of the widgets, all of the settings for your mic. It has an audio output, so you can toggle or set the active audio devices on your Stream Deck. Um, if you have Philips Hue or Hue lights from Philips, this helps you control those lighting fixtures. Track the number of times you've pressed a key, which is kind of a weird counter. Um, has a Stream Elements OBS.Live integration, Shadow Play for NVIDIA, Voice meter integration, if you have multiple mics or multiple stuff that you're doing, say if you're doing a podcast or something like that. OBS tools, which is probably just some handy stuff. Um, OBS commands and tools to use on your Elgato Stream Deck. So includes instant replay, drop frames alarm, modifying browser and video sources, quick scenes toggle, and OBS CPU usage. So basically, if you're worried about OBS running too hot on your CPU, you can actually tailor this, that's what this integration is for, is to show you when you're running OBS, what it's doing to your CPU versus the one that I have is just your overall CPU usage when you're running a game plus OBS, Discord, whatever you're running on the CPU generally, it will show you the percentage of CPU it's using to run all of those applications. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. I'm not gonna go over all of it. Um, there's even live stats on the Stream Deck for the coronavirus, oh my gosh. Okay, so so anyways, you guys can see that there's a huge, huge number of more actions that you can add to the Stream Deck, not just the stuff that I have, but I wanted to make sure I showed that to you guys, just in case you were curious. So going into the second row, we have um, my follower button. So this is tied to my uh, Twitch account as well. And what this does is once I go live, this will display how many followers I have in the current stream. So it's really handy if I have, you know, my windows on, um, I have a dual monitor setup. So my windows for my OBS, my Streamlabs uh, chat bot and my Discord are on one screen and then my game and obviously everything else is on my primary monitor. And uh, this is really handy if I don't feel like looking at my um, other screen all the time. Uh, the Stream Deck allows me to see how many followers are concurrent in my stream in real time, which is really, really cool. Um, so the next button we have here is the mic button. So this is tied to my HyperX Quadcast that you guys can hear me talking through right now. And this allows me to mic, or excuse me, mic, excuse me, mute 
and unmute my mic at will. So I don't have to go into Streamlabs. I don't have to hit any buttons on my mouse or my keyboard to mute my mic. So I will turn it off and you'll hear my voice cutting out. I'm gonna keep talking so you guys can hear that the voice cuts out and comes back on. So you guys probably heard that my voice cut out a little bit there. So that's how I unmute and mute my mic button. And then here we have, I'm not gonna hit it, but this is my on air button. So basically what this does is with my on air, it basically, when you hit it, I will go live on Twitch. It's tied to my Twitch account. So when I hit that button, it will immediately start my live stream, which I'm not gonna hit it because I don't wanna do a live stream right now. So the next button we're gonna go into, I'm actually gonna do with my overlay here so you guys can actually see what's going to happen with the overlay when I hit this button. So we have the Elgato um, button here on my stream deck. Now, this is what is called a multi-action switch. Uh, application. So what this will do is based on the scene I'm on, it will do exactly what I want it to do, such as muting some kind of audio. It will um, switch the scene for me. It will deactivate stuff I don't want audible. Uh, different things that you can tailor to how you want your stream to work based on what application you're using. So this is only tailored to when I'm using my capture card. The PC one we will go over, that's only when I'm accessing stuff on my PC. So I'll show you how it works and how to set it up. So we go to the Elgato button. So the first scene we're gonna look at is the overlay scene. That's the overlay scene that we're on right now. So when I'm on the overlay scene, what it will do is when it switches, say from just chatting to overlay, that's how I set it up. So when it switches to overlay, this is what it'll do exactly. So if we're looking at the overlay scene, it will switch to the overlay scene it will activate the Elgato audio, it will deactivate on the overlay scene the background music so you won't hear the music anymore, it will activate the Elgato capture card, the actual video, it will deactivate the PC screen or the display capture for my PC, and it will also deactivate the desktop audio for my PC. Now if I go to the just chatting scene, it will go to the just chatting scene, it will deactivate the Elgato audio, the game sound, it will activate the capture card picture, it will deactivate the PC screen of the display capture for my PC. It will activate the background music so you guys will hear music. And last but not least, it will deactivate the PC audio. So I'm gonna hit the button for the Elgato once and I'm gonna hit it twice so you guys can see what the actual scene does. So here we go. So you guys can hear the music starts. The, the Elgato audio is gone. The picture for the Elgato is there. My webcam is there along with my latest follower, my latest cheer, my latest donation, and my latest subscriber. And then we have the chat box up here in the top right. So that's what that one does. So if we do the flip side and hit the scene button again, it will change back to the overlay and you guys will hear the music cut out and we will be back to the scene that we just started on. So as you guys can see, it does exactly what I want it to do. Cuts the music out, and then if I want to go back to just chatting and have some music and stuff while I'm just chatting with you guys, we can do that. So if we're on the multi-action PC tab, when we're on the just chatting scene, what this tab will do is we'll be on the just chatting scene when I hit that button. We will go to the mixer audio. That will be uh, my desktop audio. So if I'm playing something on, if I'm streaming and I watch and I want to watch somebody's Twitch channel or YouTube video and I want you guys to hear the audio, that's what will happen. You guys will be able to hear the audio through my desktop audio, and that will activate when I hit the button on this sequence. Now the other thing it will do is it will activate the background music on just chatting. So it will activate the music plus the desktop audio, and I can obviously tailor that to do the opposite, where I want the desktop audio and the music off, or the music on and the desktop audio off. So then it goes to my, it will deactivate, excuse me, deactivate my uh, Elgato HD60, and it will activate my display capture. So that's what that sequence does. The other sequence is if we're on the overlay, which is what is the uh, actual, um, scene that we're on right now. So with that one, it will activate the display capture, the picture for my, for, my, for my computer. It will activate the desktop audio. It will deactivate the background music if we're on this overlay. And last but not least, it will deactivate my Elgato HD60. So this, you guys will actually be able to see the display capture and what the button actually does. So if we hit the PC button once, go to my just chatting scene. As you guys can probably hear, 
the uh, background music is on as well as the desktop audio. So if I went to say Twitch and I wanted to say, look at, let's see, who do I want to watch? Let's watch something from Huskers. So this is Huskers latest video. If you guys can hear the desktop audio is actually off. So if we go to the next one and we hit the PC button. Everything's off, but the desktop audio. My mic is still going. The desktop audio is going so we can hear Huskers playing his game. I think he's playing Warzone in this game. Um, but all you can hear is the mic and his audio as he burps as he burps on camera, which is fantastic. I love Huskers. So that is the PC tab when it's on overlay. If you go to the PC tab again and you hit it again, it'll transition. And now we can hear the background music. The desktop audio is muted or should be muted. Actually, the desktop audio is still on. That's okay. It's actually what it's supposed to do. And then the mic audio, as you guys can hear as I'm still talking. So if you hit it, the, the cool thing about the Elgato Stream Deck, so I'll close this out, we'll say bye bye to Huskers. Um, the cool thing about the Elgato Stream Deck, one of the coolest features, is you can tailor the buttons to do exactly what you want. So if you want a scene change and have this happen, this happen, this happen, you can do that. If you want to switch to another scene and have stuff turned off or turned back on, you can do that. Just make sure that you set it up right. Um, so that is the PC and Elgato tabs. And I think last but not least is the Commands tab. So the Commands tab has actually 10 items in it. Um, so we'll go back to the overlay here because I don't want the background um so we'll go back to the actual display capture you guys so you guys can actually see the buttons um so we'll go into the uh commands tab so this has like uptime youtube twitter instagram mic headset discord cpu gpu and monitor buttons so basically what this does is if you guys have ever seen me streaming and oh i was wondering oh what uh headset does phantom still to use so if you go to my twitter page and you go to my Twitter chat, or excuse me, my Twitch chat, excuse me, and go to channel, and say you wanna know, you're, you're watching my stream, blah, 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 and you want to know what headset I use. So you go down here in the, into the Twitch chat, and you hit exclamation point headset. The Turtle Beach Stealth 420X is the headset that I use. So if you wanted to know what monitor I use, monitor I use the MS optics mag 27 C I have two of them now say you want to know how long I've been streaming for you type exclamation points uptime it'll show you that I've been streaming for I'm offline I'm not streaming right now but the cool thing is if you hit those buttons so I will hit the um, I'll hit the GPU I'll hit the GPU button on the stream deck so it'll automatically type in exclamation point GPU and it'll show you I have an AMD R9 380 in my computer. So those are the buttons that I have for my stream deck guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video of a, sort of like a roundabout way of explaining the stream deck to you. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do. It's tailored to absolutely whatever you want. They've done a really good job with integrating all of this stuff into the stream deck. So there's other stuff that I didn't show you guys such as like game capture. Um, if you exclusively use the game capture um, stuff from Elgato, the software, I don't like using it because I think Streamlabs is a much better program. Um, it has a lot more bells and whistles to it versus what you can do inside Elgato versus Streamlabs. I think Streamlabs is a lot more tailored to streamers. Um, so you can add for game capture exclusively, you can add a scene, you can record, you can screenshot flashback recording, you can stream from there and you can live commentary. Then it has an integration for Mixer if you're a Mixer streamer. The original OBS studio uh, has a soundboard so you can, sound, you can play and stop audio. For the Stream Deck, uh, obviously has the Create Folder, which we went over, uh, the Multi Action, the Multi Action Switch, Random Action, Timer, and Brightness for your Stream Deck. Um, just Stream Labs in general, so you can skip an alert, you can mute your alerts, you can pause alerts, you can spin wheel, uh, play credits, empty jar, uh, show media, and change your profile. Then for Stream Labs, we obviously have the scene that we went over, 
We have the mixer audio, which is whatever audio you want coming through as you're streaming. You can record stuff from there, you can stream automatically, and you can add your sources. The system, um, the website is exactly how I did it. So with the website, you just drag this over inside the folder for Google and then type your URL or copy and paste whatever URL you want it to go to when you hit that button. Um, the hotkey switch and hotkey I don't really use. Uh, the open, I'm not sure exactly what that does, but it looks like it opens an app, a file, or a folder if you have it set the right way. You can do like a text document, a multimedia, Twitch, you can do your chat message, viewers, how many viewers you have, and clear your chat like we talked about up in this left-hand corner right up here. That's my delete uh, chat. My follower button is here. Um, if, you're a, uh, if you're a partner or an affiliate streamer, you can obviously play an ad from here. Uh, you can stream game time or game title. Um, sub chat, you can turn your chat into a sub chat if you only want subscribers to chat inside your chat. You can slow the chat down. You can have a followers chat, an emo chat where all you can do is post pictures, which would get really, really annoying, I think. Um, you can create a stream marker for something that happened in your stream. You can create a clip or you can open your last clip that you made. Uh, Twitter, you can send out a tweet. Like I said with this one right here, that is my send tweet if I'm going live. Uh, you can change the name of your tweet. Uh, Xsplit I don't really use. YouTube, you obviously can do a chat message inside your chat. You can see how many viewers you have. The control center I don't really use, but that's for like stuff if you have like lights from Elgato, key lights and uh, stuff like that. Uh, the voice mod, obviously you can select voice and um, do your voice changer. You can push to, push to talk voice changer. Hear your voice, ambient effects, mute on and off, random voice instant sensor beat, play meme sound, and then you have your Spotify integration and your custom stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this really, really quick rundown of how you use the Stream Deck. And like I said, my Stream Deck is really, really uh, simple. It does exactly what I want it to do. Um, I will probably play around with it more and more as I get more in depth into streaming, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel. Um, I really appreciate you guys sticking around for this tutorial. If you made it to the end of the video, again, I really, really appreciate it. Please consider subscribing. Please consider uh, following, um, following on my Twitch, which is uh, twitch.tv slash phantom stilts. Uh, I stream there almost every day. Usually I'm gonna probably start streaming Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, just to sort of cut down on the um, the load I have with both my YouTube channel and my Twitch channel. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. You guys are brand new to the channel and I will see you guys on the next video. Take care guys.